So last week we had some of that basic introduction to ethics and what it means and uh, applying it in an organizational and or business context. This week we're going to start exploring some of the ways that we can use primarily normatively to assess um, whether doing something is ethical or not. The first uh, approach to this is to actually concentrate on the act or behavior itself and to ask, is that act ethical? And so that's what today's about, looking at that aspect of ethical decision making and providing us four key frameworks to examine ethical acts. So what we're really doing is concentrating on these uh, four frameworks uh, or theories in order to judge uh, an ethical act. That's what they focus on. So this week, we're concentrating on judging the act. Next week, we're actually going to be having a look at uh, how can you judge the actor in order to determine whether something's ethical. So that's what binds together the consequentialist and the deontological ethical approaches. One of the other things that you can see in this diagram is that two of the approaches we're using, ethical egoism and utilitarianism, focus on the consequences of the action. That's how, that's how we judge the act, based upon uh, its impact or what happens as a result of the act. The other generalized approach to judging an act is deontological, which uh, focuses more on how or, or, or what you do. Okay, so they judge, is, is what you're doing ethical, not the result of what you're doing? And so we look at Kantian ethics and its extension, moral rights, to think about that. One of the ways of looking at the similarities and differences between these theories is to think about how they conceptually relate to one another. So really in one dimension, um, these theories run from focusing uh, on the outcome or the consequence, that consequentialist approach. On the other, um, we can look at a focus on, um, on how we do it, right? On, 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 or, or on what we're actually doing, the, the focus on what we're doing, our duty, how we, how we do it. So on one end, we've got these consequentialists. Now, also what we tend to find is that the theories can focus on either the individual or they can focus on society or the group as their frame of reference. So what we can see is that ethical egoism, which has a whole series of, of histories in different cultures, uh, Yang Zhu, uh, Ian Rand, uh, Sidgwick, etc. We can see that this really focuses on 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 individual outcome. Yeah, focusing, we judge something, a, a, an act by its effect on the individual and the outcome for the individual. In contrast, like a utilitarian, particularly the classic approaches of Bentham and Mill, focuses on the uh, outcome for society. In much the same way, human rights, and here we've got Eleanor Roosevelt, who was a huge, uh, a huge proponent of these kind of rights um, as part of it. So, uh, so what we can see here is this idea of human rights um, is really focused again on, on the individual and, and what should be afforded to them. So uh, the, the rights that they will have or how they should be treated. So it focuses on how the individual should be treated. And Kant really then really was focusing on how everyone, right, everyone should act. So it's a big difference here about everyone versus focusing on the individual level. So there are many aspects which are kind of similar and different across all of these conceptualizations. It's not just a simple view of there's consequentialist and there's, there's deontological. Yes, that's one way to separate it, but in other ways, these theories can be thought of as being quite similar. So that's a very brief overview. The next step is to go one step down and start looking at a couple of these frameworks, starting with the consequentialist approach.